these are phonins. Okay, and they're called something a little different. They're called vinyms in, in, in the, the software, but it's the same thing. Phonemes are mouth movements and sounds coupled to mouth movements. There is a set of the Preston Blair phoneme series is what has been used for animation for many, many years. The, the mouth movements, there are distinctive mouth movements that people have qualified and quantified here that show if you're going to create a, cust a custom character from scratch, which is an option I'll show you next week, what kind of poses, what kind of facial poses you would want to encompass mostly all of the things that people's mouth movements make whenever they're, uh, whenever they're actually speaking. So this series, there's actually not too many of them here. There's a phonemes for A and I, there's phonemes for, the, for E sounds, there's phonemes for O sounds, for U, and then the phonemes for a lot of these are very similar. The mouth movements for C, D, G, K, N, R, S, Y, and Z are all the same. It's the same mouth movement, right? That's the, the cheating that we get a little bit in, in the, the, the lip sync process. Same thing with these phonemes. These are all the same. Okay, F and V as well. T and H, L, M, B, P. Okay, so as you can see, there, there's some of these, again, that, that are all coupled together. Now, this is going to come in handy here in a second in the character animator program. I, I, want, to, I want you to watch the character's mouth as it moves and, and to see that these phonemes are all represented. These are things I'm going to show you in Photoshop as well that are represented. So knowing that you've got to have a decent plot, right? You've got to have a good storyboard set, okay? And we know we have, to do, we have to sync mouth movements and things like that. Let's say we've done all that stuff and we're ready to try out some stuff in Character Animator. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up Character Animator and show you just some brief stuff in here. This isn't gonna to take too long, but this is an interesting program. This is pretty pretty wild. So Adobe Character Animator, here is the the, uh, the setup for this. Now, I'm not sure if this will work again on the OWL. Uh, this is designed to work with a camera that has a webcam and a microphone already attached. Okay, that, that's kind of the idea here. When you first open Character Animator, and this little home button is how you get to this thing. These are pre-rigged, preset characters. Okay, these characters are already set up to animate. Now I wanna show you how easy this is, if the owl will let me. All you have to do, open up Character Animator, okay, and we're gonna get way more in depth to this next week. Open up Character Animator and click on any one of these characters. Now, some of these characters are just faces, some of them have hands you can move around, and I'll try, I'll try a couple of different ones here and show you the differences. I'm going to try this little wizard guy for starters. When you click the character, what happens right out of the gate, and automatically, if you notice what happened here, is my microphone uh, kicked on, or my, my webcam kicked on, okay? And this character is already moving. The character's mouth movements, if you notice, are syncing up pretty closely to my mouth movements. That is the genius of Character Animator right out of the gate, okay? So what this thing is doing here, just to show you some different stuff, what's going on in this scene. What we've got here is the Character Animator interface, okay? And so the whole interface here is doing, there's a bunch of different stuff going on. I'm actually going to set something really quickly here. To really animate this character properly, I'm kind of going out of order a little bit, but I'm going to show you some stuff. I'm going to look at this panel over here and look dead center in my camera. So up in the top right-hand corner, if you really want this character to work properly, I'm actually going to pop my glasses up here, too. I'm going to get my head. Now, again, the owl isn't perfect for this because it's splitting my camera into this 360 camera up top and the regular camera on the bottom. If you're using a regular webcam, it's just going to be the full window with a regular webcam. That's what you want. But regardless, get your face in this circle, okay? And I'm going to look right at the camera, and I'm going to click set, pose, set rest pose, okay? I'm going to go down a little lower so it captures my face better. And if you notice what's happening here, if you look at my picture, it's actually got motion capture points applied to this. And now that I've set my rest pose, look at the character's eyes. If I look down, the character looks down. If I look left, the character looks left or right, okay? So this thing is actually real time capturing my mouth movements and face movements, eyebrow movements, check this out. If I move my eyebrows up and down or just one eyebrow, the character mirrors that stuff. So this is all based on a character, the, the Photoshop rigging of this character is the idea. Now, the really interesting part about this program 
is that this is now set up for me to live capture this stuff. So if I wanted to, while I'm while this character is up here in puppeting, I can just it's this easy. You just click click the character, you, you set up a character, you click your your rest pose, and then you click record. If I click record, three, two, one. Now my character is actually recording a scene. So here in motion graphics, I can demonstrate to you the basics of motion capture with this character. I can move my facial features around, things of that nature, and we've got a live recording ready to go. And then when you're done, you hit stop. Okay, I'll put my glasses back on so I can actually see. And if we re rewind and play, now my character is actually recording a scene. Check so it out. Here in motion graphics, I can demonstrate to you the basics of motion capture with this character. I can move my facial features around, things of that nature, and we've got a live recording ready to go. This is ready to export. Okay, so so the really cool thing with this is, we, again, I'll go over the interface a little more quickly here, but but the, the fast kind of setup for this is you can pop a character in here, just hit record, do your spiel with this thing, and you've got your character ready to rock. We can even clone out this background. We can key out this background in After Effects and put him in a different scene if I wanted to. Now, to get this thing out, you just go to File, Export, Video. Okay, so just like with After Effects, all you have to do is go to File, Export, Video, and it brings it into Media Encoder. Okay, so Media Encoder is going to pop up here. It's going to ask me what kind of file format I want. Now, I'm going to go ahead and save this thing to my desktop real quick. And Media Encoder should pop up here in a minute. Now, this again, this computer is having some issues with this because it's not exactly the most high-end machine in the world. But it should pop up. Yep, here we go. Here comes Media Encoder. And now it should let me render an H.264 out of this thing, out of Media Encoder, whenever it pops back up. Now, that rendered file is that what you, you take back into After Effects and do your After Effects on top of that. Okay, you could add effects to it, you could add text to it, things of that nature. You could swap out the background with the keying software, all kinds of different options for this thing after you've done it. Okay, now you don't have to just use your pre cooked characters in here. Okay, now there are, I'm gonna go back to this little home button up here just to kind of show you. There's a bunch of pre rigged characters in here. All of these do different stuff. I clicked on the little, the little doctor character, Dr. Applebaum here, or Applesmith. Dr. Applesmith, if you notice on this character, he's got facial features as well, but what he's also got is arm movements, okay? So in addition to moving the character's features around, remember that puppet feature that I showed you in After Effects a couple of weeks ago, okay? That puppet feature has been integrated into this software. So as I'm actually recording my dialogue i can move my character around and puppet my character around and it will record that as well okay now this is media encoder just popping up all of a sudden that took that long to pop up sorry about that anyway let me let me just show you again i'm just going to pop on record here and i can start animating i can say hello class you know welcome to motion graphics this is uh, over here, I will be showing you some some different things, and I could animate this stuff over here, making me add some bullet points uh, along the the right hand side of the screen here later on in After Effects. But all of these things are now animated and recorded. If I hit stop, it is captured all of that stuff, and I can start animating. I can say, "Hello, class. You know, welcome to motion graphics. This is." Uh, over here, I will be showing you some some different things, and I could animate this stuff over here, making me add some bullet points uh, along the the right hand side of the screen here. So, so you get the gist of this. The, the whole point of this software is it it allows you to to just jump into motion capture and use the motion capture relatively quickly. That's kind of the whole point. Now, I do want to show you not not only not only, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pop into Photoshop here in a minute and then show kind of the magic of how this works. Not only can you choose any one of these characters, these characters are all up for modification, okay? So if I'm in uh, a character a character of some sort, like let's just say this wizard character that I was in before. Uh, again, this one has kind of the more complicated facial features. One interesting thing about this is you can you can click on over here. Now, let me, let me go over the interface a little bit to kind of give you a little bit of familiarity with it. Obviously, this area here is our staging area. This is where the actual animation takes place, where the, the mocap takes place, that kind of stuff. 
top right hand corner is your microphone or is your your mic and uh, video window, which shows all the mocap stuff. All of this is your properties panel on the right, timeline on the bottom, playback tools in the middle, and this is your your bin. Okay, your file bin on the left. Now there's a couple things happening up here that I want to describe that are fairly important. We've got just like with After Effects, and this is why we start with After Effects and jump into Character Animator later. This works with scenes, okay? So each scene, if I double click this, each scene that I've got going is still active, okay? The things that I recorded are still in these scenes. Notice the things I recorded with Dr. Applesmith here. And I can start animating. Can start are still in there, okay? I can add to this, this I can re-record it, I can delete okay. stuff, I can tweak the animations, which we'll get into later. But all this stuff is it through the scene, okay, itself. So if you double click on the scene, that's how you get into it. The puppet itself is also selectable, like the wizard puppet. If I select this wizard puppet, a whole new group of stuff pops up, okay? Now, I, this button right here, particularly important, okay? I want to show this to you because this is the whole point of Character Animator. These puppets are meant to be pre-rigged templates that you go in and modify, okay? You, it's not meant to make these things from scratch. You can make them from scratch, but that's kind of pointless. Instead, what you can do, and there's a button specifically for this. They've meant you to do this. Click on the, the puppet and click this little PS button, edit original. Now that's going to fire up Photoshop, okay? And I want to show you some stuff in Photoshop that's really important when it comes to this puppet, okay? So here is my puppet in Photoshop. Now I'm going to fire up the layers here and show you some stuff. There's a lot of layers in here. There's a whole lot of layers in here. The layers in here are very, very important. The naming conventions of these layers are super duper duper important. The naming conventions of the layers themselves, the actual names on them. Now, not this. The main folder comprises the whole puppet. Now, if you look in the subfolders, there's subfolders, a head, body, pendant, and back body. Now, the pendant itself is, again, everything you want to animate, you need to have in a separate folder. Okay, that's the starters of this stuff, is it animates in a separate folder. But the naming conventions, head, body, uh, pendant, back body, mostly head and body. These are these are different things that are just background things that they can animate separately. But head and body, if you open any puppet, they will have this nomenclature, head, body, in a folder, in a group. If you go inside that group, there are subgroups, okay? Each for each thing you want to animate. The eye, the, the left eye, the nose. Now, if you notice, there's subfolders for these. There's a lot of stuff in here, right? The more articulated, look at that. That's to blink and things like that, okay? The eye pieces itself, the squint on the eye itself is in there. The more things you want your character to do, the more complicated this needs to be, okay? The more pieces you will have inside here. So the head itself is, is all labeled out. Again, the, the eyes, all this different stuff are all labeled out. Even to the point where little pluses, you see these little pluses, right eyebrow, left eyebrow, mouth. These things, again, we'll get into this later. There's parenting structures inside there. And, and it even draws what's supposed to be a fixed structure versus a movable structure. The mouths are movable, obviously. I'm gonna go and open these up. The movable structures of the mouth have a little plus in front of them to denote that they're, they're motion-oriented items, okay? Now, if we look inside the mouth, okay, check this out. These will look familiar. These layers, okay, if I turn them on and off, are the phonemes that I was just showing you. A, D, F, okay, E, A, all these different mouth movements have been created in either Photoshop or Illustrator for this character and are separate pieces. If you notice, each one of these is a couple of different chunks, okay? So there's two different pieces here for this mouth movement. So these are complicated puppets. They're, they're, there's a lot happening here with these puppets. But the point of this is that these are modifiable. Now, this is a fairly complicated puppet, but just to show you why, that, that some of this is doable, if I select, I'll go auto select by layer, and I select the character's hair here, and let's just say for, just for funsies, I go in and I do some coloration on the hair, right? I go in and I change his hair color, okay, over here. And over here, whoops, that was a little bit sloppy. That's okay. All right, so so I've changed his basic character, and I could change his beard color and all that other stuff. But I'm just going to do a real simple change. All th this is the plus of this. Again, any pre-rigged character you download off the internet, and there are lots of these out there for free. All you got to do is open it up and do this. Go into Photoshop, 
edit the character a little bit, change some colors, add some stuff on top of it even. Make sure it doesn't change this naming structure though. The naming structure is the important part. Anything you do has to have this naming structure. You can replace this layer with completely different hair, but it has to be named plus hair left or plus hair right if you wanna move it, okay? Save, control S, okay? I just did control S and now, or command S, if I go back into my program here, check it out, okay? Now that I turned off the eyeball for my character, so now it's like double creepy. Remember I, I was looking in the blink cycle uh, and my character's, uh, my character's eyes, I turned off an eyeball on one of those layers. So now he has this weird kind of missing eye unless he blinks one of them, which is kind of freaky. But if you notice, the hair color's changed, right? This is the point. You can go in and you can modify any puppet in this program or puppets you download off the internet. Now I'm gonna show you how to do that too. Double click in my project bin, or I could go to file import, okay? He's in my download, so I'm gonna snag it on my downloads character. Here's my little pickle character. I'm gonna click import, okay? There we go, there's my pickle character. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new scene for my pickle character. That's down here on the, the left-hand corner if you wanna make a new scene. I don't wanna drop him into the scene with my wizard because that's gonna do some weird stuff with the, with the mocap. So, new scene, I'm just gonna pop a new scene in there. All you gotta do is take your character, okay? Drag your character into the scene. Now, it automatically made a new scene for me. And if you notice, there's some weird stuff happening here, right? My pickle character's face is like floating around on screen. We're gonna get into some of this stuff later. Somebody who set this character up right, the reason I wanted to show you this one is because somebody didn't set this character up right online and the naming conventions on the layers weren't correct. Now we can correct this stuff. Next week, I'm gonna show you how to get into the rigging settings and things like that. Like there's something on the head here. The head was, was tagged as a free floating piece and it shouldn't be a free floating piece. I can turn off in the rigging that we're gonna get into the whole whole mess of stuff about rigging up a character next week. But if if I change some of this stuff, there we go. Now my my pickle character, and again I haven't I haven't set my rest pose yet so his eyes aren't quite right. So if I look at the camera and I set my rest pose, just make neutral facial features. And now the character, if I look around, right, he's looking kind of shifty but it's working. It's actually mirroring my, my mouth movements and things of that nature. And I can go in and I can move his little hands around and things like that. Now, I did wanna show you one last thing. If you don't have a webcam, okay? Again, not everybody has access to the same technology. I understand that. If you don't have a webcam to do the motion capture, you don't need it, okay? It's not as good. This, this, this next process I'm gonna show you isn't as good as the mocap. It doesn't give the facial features and things like that but it will work, okay? So what you can do if you don't have a camera to do mocap, you can pre-record your dialogue. I just pre-recorded a little teeny bit of dialogue from my phone. I just used the voice memos on my phone and emailed it to myself, okay? Now what that's gonna give you, and I'm gonna open up Adobe Audition here for a minute. Adobe Audition is the, the audio editing program uh, that Adobe has. The, the type of file you're gonna get, I'm gonna down, show you the download here an M4A file. Now, if you're on an iPhone like me and it's a full quality uh, audio file, it'll give you an M4A file. Now, ironically, Adobe doesn't work with M4As, okay? So if you get an M4A file, it's not gonna work in this program. What you've gotta do if you're using your voice memos is you go through and do a recording, do a voice memo recording, send it to yourself, email it to yourself, and then you open Adobe Audition, okay? This is very easy in Adobe Audition. This is Adobe Audition and you don't need to know anything about it. All you do is you take your recording, drop it in the bin on the left over here, okay? Double click it. This is my wave file. What's up, folks? This is a little audio recording just to show how you can drop in some audio and have it lip sync in Adobe Character Animator. So there you go. There's a little, there's a little, just a little waveform. All you gotta do, drop the file in here, double click it, file, save as, and save it as a WAV PCM, a WAV file, okay? A WAV file or an MP3, I'm not a big fan of MP3s. MP3s are compressed audio that sound like garbage. WAV files are going to be your full quality audio file. That is what you'd rather use. So the WAV file, I'm gonna go ahead and, and save this WAV file into my downloads. This WAV file is what we wanna bring into Character Animator, okay? So what you do is you just pre-record it on your phone, send it to yourself, convert it to a WAV file, go into your, character animator bin, 
import, double click to import your audio. So again, or file import, if because if it's being finicky on the double click. On my downloads, here is my WAV file. Import it, okay? There's my recording. So I've just imported my WAV file. It's very simple. Drag it to the timeline down here, okay? And then all you gotta do, now that this WAV file's on my timeline, right? What's up, folks? Nothing's happening with my character. This is a little audio recording just to show how you can drop. Okay, there's my audio is on the timeline. It's selected. I'm going to go up to timeline, compute lip sync take from scene audio. Okay, and this will automatically go through and try to match up the audio to the lip sync. So I'm going to go ahead and shut up and hit play here. What's up, folks? This is a little audio recording just to show how you can drop in some audio and have it lip sync in Adobe Character Animator. Pretty cool. So so that, that's the neat thing is like, again, you don't, this can be pre-recorded audio from a client. It can be, be it can be basically anything. And I, again, I can show you how to go in and modify some of the stuff a little bit next week. But I did want to show you some of the capabilities of this program. It's pretty neat right out of the gate.